Yes, welcome into Sports Bit Betting Insight today, Thursday, September 15th. Big game breakdown of the marquee games in college football. How about Ohio State, Oklahoma, Florida State, Louisville, Michigan State, Notre Dame, just to name a few. We'll go rapid fire coming up. And of course, the play of the day. We're 10 2 in football. Stay tuned for that. Some shout outs coming up in a few minutes. Bad beats, bad bets, bad for the books. Ooh, the Giants get swept. Mad Bum was sent on a $3 favorite. They have lost six in a row to the Padres. They are 20 and 35 since the break, Teddy. I mean, again, we, every day it feels like we talk about some team that can't be minus 180 or yep. can't be minus 220 or can't be, in this case, minus $3. And, you know, uh, it was not a good day for the house on Wednesday. And this certainly one of the results where the books were paying – and they were paying a whole lot of tickets because San Fran money wasn't exactly rolling in, given, as you mentioned, that they're 20 and 35 since the All-Star break. Yep. Apologies out there. We missed one yesterday. A shout-out to James Crawford on Twitter and a loyal viewer. We missed a, a bad, a vicious beat last night. Uh, Giants and the under became Padres in the over with that five-run ninth, Teddy. That is the tenth time this year the Giants have blown a game where they had at least a three-run lead. Yeah, and I appreciate Hey, I love the fact you guys are contacting us on Twitter. Yeah. We check it. We look at it. We'll respond to it. At Teddy underscore covers. You find Polly at Polly Howard. Uh, and thanks for the feedback. Yep. Love it. Shout out to Jeff Tessier as well. And the, there was another viewer too uh, about the, the, what they learned from the, the teaser segment you did. Bravo, Teddy. No, thanks. I, I, and I, I really appreciate the kind word. Thank you. I think it was Simon uh, uh, who uh, gave us uh, an, another shout out and you know, look, the goal of this show is to attract an audience. That's what we're here for, all right? The way we think we can attract an audience is by giving good information every single day. It's not about having crazy opinions. It's not about insane play of the day runs. We're on a pretty nice one right now. It's about quality information on a consistent basis presented with at least some level of intelligence and some level of humor. So hopefully, Paul and I can continue to do that, and hopefully... You guys can continue to tell your friends about what you're seeing every day on Sportsbit, and we can get the audience numbers through the roof. We want 10,000 views every day here in football season. The only way we can get that is if you help us. So please help spread the word. Yeah, bravo. Nobody's doing a show like this. And plus, we're 10 and 2 with the picks. Let's go. We love football. Tell your friends. Bad for the bad for the books continues every day, every damn day in September. A 50 cent move on the Rays. The wheels have come off for the Blue Jays. They lose another series. Yeah, and I mean, the good news for uh, the Rays, you know, seeing Alex Cobb healthy and ready to be a mainstay in the 2017 rotation, he pitches a gem against, a gem, uh, against Toronto. But a 50-cent move on the underdog in Tampa just blows him out. The markets are clearly starting to react to this Blue Jays slump in a big way. Toronto just doesn't have the feel right now of a team that's about to click on. They're clicked off. Yep, <laughs> stick a fork in them. They're finished. There's no, much, you can't stick I'm doing it. Them Hold on, I'm doing it. There's too much pressure on the pitching staff. The offense stinks right now. It's not like you're throwing Glavin, Smoltz, and Maddox to begin with. It's uh, Estrada, Dickey, Liriano, these type of guys. Happ and Sanchez running out of gas. Too much pressure on the rotation. They know if they give up three runs, they're cooked. The Blue Jays will miss the playoffs. And they're picking their worst time to play the bad baseball here in September. 25-cent move on the Phillies, Teddy. They got there. Yeah, and of course, there's a lot of anti-Pittsburgh sentiment in the markets right now. I don't disagree with that. And the Pirates coming off a rare win where they snap an eight-game skid right back in the losing column again last night. All right, and the A's, 30-cent move and the Reds, a 55-cent move is bad for the books continues. Yeah, well, I mean, the A's move was really bad uh, for the house. Uh, 30-cent move towards Oakland. They destroy uh, Kansas City. The Royals all of a sudden slumping uh, once again. And that, (laughs) that hail wild card chase... Uh, is going to be fascinating uh, down the stretch. Uh, but the books did get one back, a lot of money on Cincinnati. They were bet 50 cents, but they were plus 145. They closed pick them, minus 105 in a lot of spots. And, of course, the Reds got shut out at home. Oh, my, my mistake there. I thought the, uh, my mistake, the Reds got beat. All right, uh, market moves, a lot going on in the NFL. Boy, the market's really taking a st- – it is nothing but Jets money. I mean, this is an, 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 an enor- for a week two game, this is an enormous line move. I mean, Buffalo opened three, okay? The, the, to say that they've taken a stand on the Jets isn't strong enough. They have absolutely, 
taking a monster stand on. I mean, yeah, stand. It's a real stand. Uh, Jets minus one and a half at key shops. It could go higher. So we're talking about a four and a half point line move on a week two game. That doesn't happen all the time. Um, significant Jets money, and it hasn't shown any time any signs of slowing down. Of course, you know we previewed this game in detail on yesterday sports, but you can check it out uh, in the archives, both on YouTube and at sbrpicks.com. Yep, the books are going to need Miami in the worst way come Sunday. Gronk back at practice for the Pats. Yeah, and who knows how line this, uh, how high this line goes if Gronk ends up playing. Just because he's back in practice doesn't mean he's going to suit up on Sunday. But obviously, we saw last week when the line moved three points when he was out, we would expect a significant market reaction if he is in. All right, we've touched on this many times on Sportsbit. Uh, the Raiders put up 30-plus on the road. It might have been the worst defense in NFL history last year. The Saints, have, they have a ton of injuries in the secondary. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, they're down to three quarterbacks. They're, they're in worse shape than Indianapolis is. And Indy, I mean, literally every healthy guy they had in the secondary last week was on the field in their nickel packages, and they didn't have any dime packages. They didn't have six healthy defensive backs. Well, the Saints down to three cornerbacks right now. P.J. Williams, he was a third-round rookie in 2015, but he sat out the entire season. Well, he played the entire game versus Oakland, didn't get – <laughs> a snap off. You have Devontae Harris. He was an undrafted rookie free agent. He played 51 of the 64 snaps. And Ken Crawley, also an undrafted rookie, who also played extensively for New Orleans in nickel packages. They do not have anybody healthy in that secondary. And given the nature of how bad that defense was both last week and last year, the cluster injuries in New Orleans secondary is clearly a problem. We'll talk maybe more about the Saints tomorrow. How about this? The Saturday cards and card in college football is better than a week one. It's a deep card. We'll go through everything coming up next in big game breakdown. We'll start with Florida State and Louisville. Huge game on Sportsbit. Betting insight today on SBRPicks.com. Hey, everyone, catch the MLB Odds Couple Show for today, Thursday, September 15th. Uh, Mike Brenner hit his one play. He's getting one play a day. I have a feeling that's going to be good for him this September. I uh, had a couple winners, a couple losers, a couple plays I'm liking on today's card, right, but Mike Brenner? your power pick hit as well. Yeah, that's right. on the power, power pick. pick it, and I'm feeling good about today's card. How You, you, have, a, you have a power pick? I have pick. a solid really, play. Really? No, okay. I really like it. A lot okay. of good stuff. You're going to tune into the show. Follow the show and uh, watch us, and you'll get that pick for that's today's That's right. Show. Hey, and tell Teddy and Paulie hello while you're over there. Back on Sports Bit Betting Insight today. Time for a big game breakdown. As always, live odds, sportsbookreview.com. Florida State and Louisville. Florida State 2, 65 the total. Louisville and, Dem and uh, Lamar Jackson been a meal ticket here on Sports Bit. Last week, 400 yards passing, 200 yards rushing against Syracuse. But big step up in competition so far. He's put up video game numbers, but it's been against Charlotte and Syracuse, Teddy. Yeah, and, and the, the, the key, of course, is that Florida State saw him last year. Syracuse, he sat out the Syracuse game last year. Charlotte hadn't seen him before. Now he's facing a defense that, A, has the team speed to hang with a guy like Lamar Jackson, and, B, that is familiar, at least modestly familiar, with what he's capable of doing. Florida State last year, 41-21. to They were minus 6.5 at home. They also won 42-31 to at Louisville two years ago. So... They've controlled this series, and they've done it with second-half domination. Florida won the second half. Or Florida State won the second half of those two games by a combined score of 70-24. to 24. That tells me that they have more depth than Louisville does, and I'm not convinced that's changed in this past offseason. Some people not buying into the Louisville defense quite yet, but this might be the most resilient team in college football the last couple of years. Go back to when they had Winston all of the second-half comebacks when they were down two or three touchdowns, Teddy. Well, that's just it. I mean, Florida State, A, they have more good players than Louisville, period. I mean, when you look at NFL talent on those teams, it's not really that close. And they have one of the nation's best conditioning programs. Remember, this team's 10-9 and nine, straight up under Jimbo Fisher in games where they've trailed in double digits. All right, that doesn't happen in college football. You're down by double digits. You don't win more than half of those games. But, you know, uh, here's a quote. Uh, from senior Marquez Wright, White. It has something to do with how we practice. The beginning is rough, and we get tired, and then midway through practice, we hit that nitrous button, like Coach Fisher says, and we finish even harder. Once we get in the game, we might get down, but we're just starting. We pride ourselves on being conditioned and being able to keep going and not getting tired. And that's definitely something that you want to pay attention to in this game if Florida State 
falls down or goes down early. And as far as team speed, other than Alabama, I think Florida State has the best team speed in the country. What they were able to do and run out Old Miss in the second half, I can only go with Florida State here in this one, Teddy. Yeah, I don't want the home dog. For as much as we've enjoyed Lamar Jackson the first couple of weeks, not this week. It'd be favorite or nothing for me. Game number two, live odds, sportsbookreview.com, Oregon and Nebraska. Nebraska 3, 73 the total. Conditioning also matters for Oregon, Teddy. Oh, it sure does. I, I mean, you know, in regular season games in which the line was single digits, whether they're favorite or dog under Mark Helfrich, and since Chip Kelly's second season, how about this, 14-1 and one against the spread uh, back in 2010. The first season with Kelly, I didn't count because of the transition, but 9-0 and oh under Helfrich and 14-1 and one since uh, Kelly's second season in 2010. So they've been really good, whether a single-digit favorite or a single-digit dog. So what does that tell us? It tells us that when the matchups are close, the Ducks have been able to wear teams down. Another squad with elite-level speed. For Oregon, it's more on the offensive side than on the defensive side, like Florida State has. Uh, but, boy, that offensive speed has really worn teams down after halftime. Second straight, second straight year in FCS quarterback transfer. Last year, Vernon Adams, Vernon Adams from Eastern Washington. This year, Dakota Prukup uh, from Mo Montana State. Is uh, I'll ask you this: Is Mon is uh, Nebraska any good? Well, that's a, and that's a real question. I mean, you know, uh, Prukup was the first team FCS All American last year. The kid can play. Uh, I don't know if he has an NFL future, but it's not like, with the exception of Mariota, that Oregon has been sending a ton of quarterbacks to the NFL and having success in that regard. Now, you know. Yes, if Nebraska is any good. I'll tell you this. They're not as good as the scoreboard has looked so far. They got wins and covers against Fresno and Hawaii in their first two games. Both of those games were competitive contests at halftime. Both those games were competitive contests after three quarters. The fourth quarter, Nebraska 50, Fresno State and Wyoming 0. Wyoming was a turnover machine last week. Fresno was, fell apart the week before. I don't know that Oregon is going to have those same type of failures. And when you have a team that outscored their opponents, their first two opponents, 50 to nothing in the fourth quarter of the first two weeks, you just wonder if maybe the markets are overvaluing them just a little bit. Let's put it this way. My number didn't have Nebraska as the favorite here, let alone the favorite by a field goal. Yeah, amen, brother. Live odds, sportsbookreview.com. Let's continue. Rapid fire, Michigan State, Notre Dame. Notre Dame at home, seven and a half. 51 and a half the total. If you're a dog, you want you want D'Antonio as your coach. 13, 4 and 1 ATS as a dog the last five seasons. Uh, I'll tell you, cause for concern though, they couldn't put away Furman in their first game. Yeah, I'm not worried. Again, what what you want to do in early season college football is take advantage of market overreactions to things like Michigan State being unable to put away Furman. They weren't interested in Furman. It wasn't any. They didn't have any. They didn't pay any attention to Furman. They didn't game plan for Furman. It was just a matter of let's get our guys on the field. Let's see what we have. Let's see what we can do to replace some of the key components that have led Michigan State to being let's call them what they are, an elite program over the course uh, of the last half decade or so. You talked about D'Antonio as a head coach. You like as an underdog. Thirteen four and one against the number over the last five years. Eleven of those thirteen covers, Polly outright wins and several more than one of the ATS losses you know were games in that Michigan State played well enough to win then I remember the game at Oregon a couple years ago where you know they were right there uh, leading in the third quarter at Oregon and then things kind of unraveled they made a couple of mistakes and things went down but it wasn't like they were outclassed or blown off the field in the vast majority of those matchups although they have lost three straight to the Fighting Irish and two of those three losses came by double-digit margins. Two concerns here. I thought Brian Kelly blew the game on that Sunday night against Texas. They wasted possessions with Zaire. Kaiser's now the starting cornerback. Quarterback, he's the better QB for Notre Dame and a big issue against Texas. All the issues in the secondary, Teddy. Well, yeah. I, I mean, there's been a, a significant attrition at the defensive back positions for Notre Dame since August. They've lost four players with starting experience off the active roster for good this season or in some form or in limbo. Um, you know, uh, here's what uh, uh, we saw Brian Kelly say about the injuries in the secondary. Quote, if you look at the guys, we got Dante Vaughn in the game. He was able to get some work. We activated Perry this week in special teams to get us some more work in the safety position and other freshmen. Nico Fertitta has a lot of work there. We think we've got enough depth at the positions 
to not need to make any wholesale changes. Against Michigan State, I mean, I don't see the Spartans as a team that's likely to test Notre Dame deep. But, you know, especially with a quarterback getting his first road start for Michigan State. That being said, I have a lot of concerns laying more than a touchdown with a team with secondary issues, even though they have had some success against Spartans in the past, and they settled on the right quarterback moving forward. Whoa, what a schedule. Big game breakdown continues with Ohio State, Oklahoma, and USC Stanford. Plus the play of the day money time. We're 10-2 and two in football on Sportsbit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com. Do your research before you bet. Check out our ratings guide to see which books have the best ratings and sign-up bonuses. Open up several accounts and shop for lines at SBRodds.com. Always be ahead of the game. Yes, indeed. Back on Sportsbit. Betting Insight today at Paulie Howard at Teddy underscore covers on Twitter. Big game breakdown continues. Ohio State on the road to take on Oklahoma. The Buckeyes are favored. One and a half, 64 the total. Games of the year at the South Point here in Las Vegas. Before the season, Oklahoma was 11 in this game. Oh, man. I know what you're thinking. I agree with you. It's Urban Meyer against Bob Stoops in a big game. But Ohio State has one of the youngest defenses in the country. But so far, so good, Teddy. Oh, yeah. And again, this is a classic type of a situation where you go, look at the line just through two weeks ago. I could have gotten Ohio State plus double digits. Now they're laying. Have the markets overreacted? All right. Now, Ohio State's gotten two teams that, look, Bowling Green was a mess, <laughs> you know, in week one. Tulsa didn't play well last week in week two. So we know this Ohio State defense is very young. We know they played great so far, but no senior starters, 12 underclassmen on the two deep, not much experience. They do have great speed. That being said, when you talk about a class difference between what Ohio State has faced at home in the first two weeks of the season and now traveling to Norman, where you're facing a couple of guys, you know, I mean, they can make up for mistakes versus Bowling Green or Tulsa. You make a mistake versus Baker Mayfield or Samaj, <laughs> and next thing you know, there's seven points on the scoreboard the other way. That wasn't happening against the opponents that Ohio State's faced the first couple of weeks. Yeah, Samaj P. Ryan, just give him the ball. If you're Oklahoma, it didn't happen in week one in the loss to Houston. Sooners have not been a home dog since 2000. 2-0 two straight up in ATS under Stoops in that role. What, what do you think of this one? What's your lean? You know, I, I mean, your basic handicapping strategy says you're supposed to look at Oklahoma here. You know, given Ohio State's lack of experience, given that Ohio State's just had two relatively easy wins at home and now they're stepping up in class, Oklahoma's already stepped up in class. All of these factors say, and of course, from a line value perspective, remember, it wasn't six years ago. We're talking about a couple of weeks ago. You could have had... Ohio State plus 11. Oklahoma's minus 11 in this game. So all of those factors point towards the Sooner side of the equation. That being said, I'm not getting the window with Oklahoma. I'm telling you, I'm not getting there, Polly, for two reasons. And you brought up one of them, Urban Meyer versus Bob Stoops. I'm not doing it. You know, I'm not going to bet Stoops against Meyer in a game where it's still you win, you cover. Uh, And I believe in this Buckeyes talent level. I know they're not experienced, but if you grade out Ohio State's personnel, on both sides of the football. You're not going to get them <laughs> as a team that deserves to be underdogs to anyone this side of Alabama or maybe Florida well, State. It caused for concern. Houston went up and down the field against them. What will Ohio State do on Saturday? One more game. Live odds, sportsbookreview.com. USC at Stanford. Stanford, 8.5, 53 the total. Why is David Shaw smiling this week? He gets to work with a class difference in this game. Classes don't begin at Stanford until September 26th. Players get the equivalent of a second fall camp since playing Kansas State. No need to focus on anything other than football and getting ready for USC. Sure. And what's that edge worth? You know, again, this isn't something new for Stanford. They're, they're, they're in a quarter system. So their classes start much later than everyone else in the Pac-12. So you look at how does Stanford do in these Pac-12 openers. Let's see. It's all of them have come September, the last eight. Seven and one straight up. Seven and one against the spread. And they've beaten the spread by a combined 84 points in those games. More than 10 points per game ATS they've been covering in these Pac-12 openers. So, yeah, it's a legitimate edge for Stanford. And again, you know, uh, when you talk about the tough academic institutions where the kids actually have to do some work, Stanford's one of them. So when you have 
a second training camp with a bye week after that Kansas State game in the opener, boy, it really sets up nicely for the Stanford Cardinal against a USC team that hasn't really fared all that well against Stanford in recent years. Well, well, Teddy, we got some issues here. We got suspensions. We got off the field issues. We have uh, illness. What's going on with USC? <laughs> Just about everything. I mean, yeah. USC's got Max Brown. You know, Max Brown was rated ahead of Jared Goff as the number one high school quarterback in the country coming out. USC's got great talent at skill positions. But what they don't have right now is an offensive line that can do anything. You know, the, the problem against Alabama – Depth in the trenches. It's the same problem here. Then you look at some of the injuries. They have defensive tackle Noah Jefferson got hurt. He's doubtful for the game against Stanford. The right tackle, Zach Banner, he hasn't been able to practice. He's got some type of stomach illness. Not sure about the details for that one in particular. But the one thing you don't want in these physical matchups against the Cardinal is any type of losses on the offensive defensive lines. Looks like USC might have key losses on both the offensive and defensive lines. For this one, not surprised that the money has come for the Cardinal in early week betting. That's very good. David Shaw, pick a freaking quarterback. Let Burns go out there and play. The guy was 7-7 seven seven against Kansas State. They went right down the field twice, and you took him out of the game. Cut it out and open it up when you get in the red zone. I'm sick and tired of this shit. All right, money time. <laughs> play. You like that? Art? Right. play of the day. I, 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 just curious, Paul. Has David Shaw cost you a ticket or two in your yeah. life? Oh, Jesus Christ. It's enough already. Every <laughs> freaking game. when he get, They go right down the field, and then he becomes a completely different coach inside the 20. 10-2 yeah. in football. Let's make it 11-2. Money time. Play of the day. Betting number, 167. The Oregon Ducks, 4-0 ATS's dogs under Helfrich. Three straight-up wins. They're better than Nebraska. They'll beat Nebraska. They'll win the game. Plus three. Let's make it 11 and 2. Money time. Play of the day here on Sportsbit. Very good. Rapid fire. Tomorrow, the NFL Week 2. We'll see you Friday. Weekend preview. Sportsbit. Betting insight today on SBRPicks.com.